Hi, and welcome back to Museum at Home. Now today we are investigating an object which is kept at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Now it is something that at the time would have been priceless, it would have been so expensive. It had a very important function, a job to do, and it could even save your life. But it was something that was also beautifully crafted and decorated as well. Can you guess what object I mean? It's armour. Armour was an incredibly important way of protecting soldiers during hand-to-hand -hand combat. Fighting taking place on a battlefield with fighters close together using swords and other weapons. But when we use the term armour, we can mean lots of different things that protect different parts of the body. Let's take a look at a suit of armour and let's find out a little bit more about this topic. Now take a look at this suit of armour. This is a very special suit of armour which is held at the Met in New York. Now it was made around the year 1544 so it was made in the 16th century. By that point armour had been used in different ways for around a thousand years so it had been used for a long time. In Japan armour was first used in around the 4th century and it was made from iron plates tied together with pieces of leather. In China as well it was very common to protect soldiers and particularly certain parts of a soldier's body but it wasn't common to cover the whole body in metal. Why not? Well because that would make moving very difficult. The Celts and the Romans also used forms of armour. They used chainmail, interlocking iron rings, which were worn to protect parts of the body, but still to allow you to be able to move around and to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat as well. But this suit of armour, well, it is just that. It's an entire suit of armour. Now, first of all, let's use some of those key question words to think about this suit of armour. What kind of questions can we ask? Well, what? What is this armour made of? What parts is it made up of? What can we see on the plates? Who? Who was this armour made for? Who would have made it? How? How was it made? How was it worn? How would someone put it on? Where? Where was it made? Where was it used? And finally, why? Why are the feet not covered in metal? Why is it so beautifully decorated if it's meant to be worn in a battle? These are just some of the questions that we can ask when we look at an object like this suit of armour. So let's start with what. The key question, what exactly are we looking at? Well, starting from the top, we've got the helmet, protecting the head. Now, look a bit lower, covering the shoulders. These are something called the pauldron. This seems a bit like a strange word, pauldron. But there is a clue in the French word for shoulders, les pauls, which is where the word comes from. It covers the shoulders, les pauls in French, so we get the word pauldron. Then covering the chest is the breastplate and covering the back is the backplate. Nice and easy. Now if we look at the hands, they seem to be like metal gloves, don't they? Something to protect the hands as well. These are called gauntlets and they would protect a fighter's hands. Now remember, these couldn't be too stiff, too immovable, because fighters needed to be flexible enough to be able to handle a sword. Now on top of the legs, at the thighs, armour has something called quiz. And very, very often a soldier would also have something to protect his lower legs. And these, well these, were called greaves. So the fighter would also wear a pair of van braces and these would protect their arms as well. 
So there are lots and lots of different parts that make up a suit of armour and they all come together, they all protect a different part of the body to create an entire suit. But what was its job? Well, I think it is safe to say that whoever wore this particular suit of armour would feel quite safe. Certainly their top half at least, which is very well covered. Now the armour covers the head, the shoulders, the chest, the arms and part of the legs too. What's it made of? Well it's made of steel, a type of metal. But why is steel so special and why was it chosen as the perfect material for armour? Well, because steel is an alloy, it's a material that has been man-made by combining another metal, in this case iron, with carbon and heating it. Adding carbon into the mix is really important because it makes a stronger and a harder material and that makes it perfect for armour that was designed to protect. But look closely, there is another material used in this armour as well. Can you spot what it is? It's something very precious, another type of metal. Look at the helmet and on the breastplate, what can you see? It's gold and that has been used as a decoration on this suit of armour. If you look really carefully, you can see golden leaves and even leaping dogs that have all been worked into the design of this suit of armour. So, what kind of person or kind of fighter would wear a suit of armour like this? An ordinary soldier or someone rather important? Well, from the clues that we found in the decoration, the gold work, I think we can say that this was someone special. And in fact, it was someone very famous as well. This armour was made and worn by King Henry VIII, the Tudor King. What do we know about King Henry VIII? Well, he is probably one of, if not the, most famous King of England. Now, during his lifetime, he married six times to six different ladies. He was responsible for separating from the Catholic Church and creating the Church of England. And he was the father of later King Edward, Queen Mary, and perhaps most famously, Queen Elizabeth I, the Tudor Queen. In King Henry VIII's time, when this armour was made in 1544, kings did still play a role on the battlefield and they would still lead their troops in battle. King Henry VIII probably wore this particular suit of armour in France during the Siege of Boulogne when the English troops attacked the French town and Henry himself personally led his troops in the attack and he probably wore this impressive armour. Why? Well, both to protect himself and also to inspire pride and probably a little bit of fear in his men and in his enemies. But by this time in his life, King Henry was not a well man. He suffered terribly from something called gout and he had a rather nasty wound on his leg which grew bad because it kept opening up. Because he was quite unhealthy, this armour had a number of things to help him. It had a reinforced shoulder and a reinforced breastplate to support the king's weight. So lots of little tricks inside this armour to help the king. But suits of armour weren't just used on the battlefield. They were also used in situations that were far more fun. Tournaments were a very popular sporting event for the Tudors, where fighters would show off their skills as fighters and as lancers and horsemen. In a joust, two fighters would ride towards each other with lances, a pole-like weapon, and the aim was either to break your opponent's lance or 
to unseat your opponent from their horse so that they fell off. So, even in the 16th century, armour was still an important part of a king's wardrobe. And this particular suit of armour has a really interesting, a fascinating story to tell because of who it belonged to and where it was worn. If you have enjoyed this topic of Tudor armour, then head to our resource pack to try out some Tudor themed activities as well. And next time, we are taking a look at an object which we think we talk a lot about at the moment, masks. We'll be looking at how masks have been used throughout history and we'll be seeing some incredible examples. So, see you next time for another Museum at Home.